Thank you, Lilith. Thanks for having me here. Well, a small correction. I'm not from HLRS directly. I'm from Zikos. So, but HLRS, of course, plays an important uh, role in what I'm doing. And uh, so I just brought you some, some, some background information. Um, so it has been founded in 1996, um, but there was a predecessor, the University Computing Center. Um, it was the first German federal computing center, um, and its main service is for German researchers. Um, in 2007, there was the Gauss Center for Supercomputing uh, funded together with the other federal supercomputing centers in Jülich, Jülich, in Jülich and Munich. Um, and since 2004, we are also open for industry, uh, for European users, and uh, we are a partner for German industry and also for suppliers. We cooperate a lot, um, and there's a long um, best experience uh, regarding collaborative research projects. So, like the one we we have here now, the EuroCC, um, but there are many, many more. In fact, um, the HLS is. Uh, pretty small. Um, the, the permanent staff is about 25 people. That's administration and, of course, uh, well, system administration and uh, general administration to keep the systems running. Varying right now, I think it's about 70 uh, are based on project funding like EuroCC and, and many others. And there are also 30 scientists about uh, PhD students um, who uh, well, uh, participate in, in the university context. And so this is also an example, and I think this is two years ago, so there was a funding of uh, uh, almost 4 million euro from the state and about 5 million um, on third-party projects. So <clears throat> the system we have now is, uh, well, it's now 27 on the top 500 list. It used to be 16 when it was new. It's pretty okay. Um, and uh, the uh, the emphasis of of, of Michael Michael Resch, the, the director of, of HLRS, is to have a usable system um, with. Uh, it's not about peak performance; it's about sustained performance. Um, and as you know, sustained performance is way below 27. I think I don't know. Probably it's two, three, or four uh, petaflops. But that's uh, what what we uh, emphasize on when we do the procurement. Uh, we have benchmark codes, and uh, it's not about the high number, but uh, the system that runs the benchmark codes best um, will. Well, and there are other uh, parameters, of course, but this is an important one. What we also have is we have a, a relatively new training center. It's been uh, inaugurated 2017. Um, and this is, it's not, we, we are at a university, but it's not uh, an auditorium for, for lectures, a lecture room. It explicitly is a training center and it has, there are 30 laptops in there, uh, 60 seats so that 60 people can do training there. It's also available for industrial uh, trainings uh, while well, we do our own industrial trainings, but you can also rent it um, and it's not, not really expensive. We want to be open. Um, to, to the outside, to the industry, uh, especially. Of course, there's a focus on local industry. We have uh, companies that do their user meetings there. Uh, we like to have them there. And we make a tour uh, of the computer if they want to, all this stuff. There's a foyer where you can have some, some uh, food and, and all that stuff. So, but what I was, would like to tell you, how, how, how did it all begin? Where, where are you coming from? Um, you know we are in a pretty innovative region, so uh, I think most of you know most of the companies that you see. And uh, when I prepared uh, this, well, actually this slide from Michael, when I prepared it and looked at it and updated the revenue numbers, um, I noticed that all the names you see there are the names of their founders, which is kind of funny. Uh, but it's in, in our state, there's I think there's a long history of... of, of uh, yeah, genius engineers, kind of, who just start to do something else. We, we hope we will be able to continue that. So those names are all old. I think, uh, I think they're at least 80 years old and more. So the challenge is to, to, to keep going like that. But um, there's, a, there's a big spirit in, in our area. And um, <clears throat> we also were very lucky to have a prime minister of our state, uh, Baden-Württemberg is uh, the southeast of, of Germany, and we have about 10.5 million inhabitants. Um, and Lothar Späth, um, in 1985, bought a Cray, a Cray II, actually. And it, it was like that. He was with, with uh, my PhD professor at that time and the, the chancellor of the university. 
and they he, they were on a on a tour to the United States, and they visit, visited Cray in I guess Minneapolis or wherever that was, and they were discussing new computer. They already had a Cray one, but a smaller one, um, and they had a very nice evening, probably. Even nicer, well, no, not not nicer, but at least as uh, as nice as the one we had yesterday, and uh, there was also no limit on alcohol. And by the end of that evening, actually, I I I wasn't there personally, but I spoke to people who were there, and they they said it's true. He said, "My state needs such a system," and then he signed, I don't know, kind of pre-contract, which at that time was worth 60 million Deutschmarks. Uh, which would be 30 million euro by now without correction. Um, and he just signed it like that. And then he went back home, collected his ministers and said, I bought a computer. Do you agree? And well, it was, I think it was a, a single party government, so no coalitions, nothing like that. And that, okay, th they did. And then he had to go into the local parliament and they were no, a little bit angry because usually they like to be asked before such an amount of money is spent but um well he got it and he was quite lucky until the system was delivered the exchange rate changed so it, in the end it was only 45 million or 48 million um but it was the system here which is now it's still in i don't know whether you saw it uh, uh brendan it's still in 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 the in the building um there <clears throat> But the most important thing what he did, and that's what's here, he created 15 new positions for SME consultants. And uh, that's something that rarely happens. Investment, is, is, it's, it's a one-time thing, but if you, if you create new positions, um, this is a long-term commitment. Unfortunately, this system was not usable for industry especially not for SMEs. It was a vector system. There was no commercial software available. Um, it was even for the scientists, uh, well, not a challenge to program, but it, it was not so easy. And the, the, the tools that were available were not suited for industry. So those actually those 15 positions, I think two of them are left. All the others have kind of vanished over time. But the important thing is that was a starting point. And about 10 years later, the successor, um, Erwin Teufel, of our prime minister then, um, he was asked, well, to put again money onto the table uh, for a huge system. And then he said, mm, we, we, we don't want to pay all of that. We probably could take in industry. And this guy, he was at that time the head of Daimler-Benz. Um, and they, well, they discussed this and they founded a common company, HWW, is, it's a, a supercomputer joint venture, public-private partnership, which still exists today. And I'm also one of the two managing directors of this uh, company. And here we have shareholders, 50% are uh, public, so the University of Stuttgart and Karlsruhe, plus the state. And on the other side, there's Porsche, 10% um, anti-systems, 40. Now you're wondering, this was the Daimler guy, but uh, it's, there's no Daimler anymore. He thought it would be a smart idea to put the Daimler IT group in there, the DBIS, Daimler-Benz Information Systems, which probably was a good idea, but they sold that a few years later to T-Systems, to Telecom. And since then we have T-Systems in here, but, but it's okay. <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, you see those are the big guys. There's Porsche, there's Daimler. And initially it was only supporting the shareholders. Um, in 2011, they discussed a lot. Um, we would like to go well back, back to the roots in a way to, to SMEs again. These guys were not so much interested in SMEs, so uh, our, our state ministry, the research ministry, just said, okay, then we'll do it on our own. And that's how CCOS was founded. And CCOS has uh, two shareholders, um, the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology and the Stuttgart University, namely their computing centers, um, the Steinbuch Center for Computing and HLRS. Um, Funding-wise, see, you know, um, well, yeah, before I come to funding. So the focus actually is more on data analytics here and more on HPC there. Um, although they have a big computer as well, not as big as this one, but we also have uh, data analytics in Stuttgart, but the bigger system is here, but they get along pretty well. I don't know, we, we have a kind of rivalry between those two cities and areas in our state. There's a long history, history to it, but by doing these uh, by setting the focus points, um, this works pretty well. 
And my funding now comes 50% from the state and 25% from each of the universities. So I'm uh, in a way funded. Um, so I don't need to earn money because if I want to address SMEs and the first thing is I have to ask for money, it won't work. Yeah. It's really, really difficult um, if you want to be paid by them. That would actually mean if I were had to be paid, I would go to those SMEs that have the most money. So that would be probably the larger ones, um, and, but that's not the intention here. And around this, over time, uh, a, a number of solution centers has been set up. So this is the, the oldest one uh, since 2008. I'll come back to them. So this is automotive. This is uh, medical. This is a new one. This is actually technology-oriented on smart data. And here is a media solution center so, uh, for creative industry. Uh, so we are trying to set up an ecosystem. So now what, what we are doing, what we have to do is actually well, make it easy for SMEs to access these systems, uh, uh, HPC or large data, large scale data facilities, find, help them find the competence partners. And on the other side, uh, we support the centers in the optimization of their offering towards the industry. So we have an interface position. So we, we, we talk both sides. And if we see that our SMEs suffer because something's not working properly on, on, on the computing center side, we try to improve that and vice versa. And just an important remark, we are not doing it for the money. I'm, it's not about getting paying customers for the systems. It's about well, assure, uh, ensuring jobs, yeah? supporting the next Porsche or, or Daimler uh, innovator and entrepreneur. So I think I have about 10 minutes or five. Yeah. I go through the challenge. I have five challenges now that I just would like to go through really quick. So the first and probably the most difficult one is to find the right SMEs. So they don't come to you usually. Um, in order to find them, we do lots of press work in all kinds of media, uh, which is can be challenging depending what news you have, because journalists are only interested in you, so they are not interested in you doing good things for, for industry. Um, we do a lot of networking, so those are all the cham or some of the chambers in commerce of commerce in our region, but they're also different uh, networking partners. But you have to be careful, you have to also maintain them. So it's not just, uh, so this, this, actually this doesn't grow a lot anymore. Um, we, we have to focus uh, on those we are working with already. <clears throat> we go to a lot of the events where we think that we find the target group, uh, w whatever it is, that's what our partners are also helping us. We do own events. Um, and uh, so, and, and if we have identified some, we have to convince them that it's a good thing uh, to do, let's say, HPC. And uh, so the slide for that is usually how can I use, how can I make use of the supercomputer? And uh, the problem is, uh, what is a supercomputer? Usually it's an expensive thing. It's really an expensive thing. And if you are talking SMEs, this is not logical. The first, they, they say, wow, they are impressed. And they, they say, ah, it's expensive. It's not, it's nothing for me. So you have to be very careful. And, and, and I, I do that by shrinking the computer, telling them, okay, it's usable. So we are running Linux on it. And there's uh, all your software is on it. Not all, but, but a lot. Um, and it's affordable. And, uh, and I usually ask them, what do you think? How much does uh, CPU hour cost? And then you hear large numbers usually. Um, and we have a pay-per-use model, so you only have to pay for what you use. If you don't compute in three months, you don't get an invoice at all. And, but then, well, if you have convinced them to come, you have to make it easy for them. And that one thing is we, we try to support them in everything. Uh, we, we can't by our own, but we know people who can, so we want to be, how do you say, a single point of contact. So whenever a problem comes, they occurs, they, they come to us and we try to help them. So, and there are also the solution centers coming. So we have a partner network around. So this is about automotive. Um, this is about uh, media. So we did, for example, work with a creative uh, a company that did the renderings for Be Maya the Bee um, twice. I think it's at least twice. Um, and uh, there's now a media solution center where you see there's a lot of artistic stuff. The, the, the opera in Stuttgart is, is a member actually. Uh, so it's 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 really we are also trying to reach out. This is well beyond engineering, but it's 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 really interesting and and thrilling to see what's what's possible there. 
And the latest one uh, that's right now about to start, we are in a pilot phase now, is the Medical Solutions Center. There's a strong uh, medical community in the southern part of our state, and we are working here, especially with the Hochschule Fortwang, um, kind of in the Black Forest, um, to, well, to, to understand what they need, and we think that we can help them, and so this is the first phase um, to get going. <clears throat> And then, of course, we have lots of European projects. So Fortissimo, I think many of you know, Accelerate, the Excellence Center. We have, of course, EuroCC. That's why we are here as well. Um, and we are also part in a new uh, ED in uh, Digital Innovation Hub, a European one, uh, which is close to, to us. Um, of course, and this is also to, to gather well, competence to, to have the right partners whenever needed. Then, of course, you have to train them uh, if they want to do it on their own. They, in, in some cases, they have the right people on board, but not always. So that's where the Supercomputing Academy, the training center, comes in. We can, uh, we have, uh, uh, this, this was based on an ESF-funded project. Um, we have various modules that are partially oriented towards programming, but they are also gen more general ones. Uh, even things like uh, economics around uh, uh, doing computing, or how do you define uh, uh, a cluster if you want to buy one. So if it's, if somebody wants to buy one, that's fine for us. We they are doing HPC then, so we help them. Um, so we are pretty open on that. There you can have different courses. You can become an HPC developer by having these three courses, and if you do two more, you can become it. HPC expert. Actually, we are talking about three months courses. So we are doing this since two or three years. We have, I think, a handful of HPC experts who did really visit five courses and uh, have their own uh, certificate. And finally, when they are there, it's, it's still not over. You have to maintain them, make sure that you can keep them as users. And again, I also have logos. Um, and the more interesting one for me are the ones that you don't know, because those are the smaller ones. Um, but of course, we also have the nice ones here as well. Um, but and and that's not a complete li list. But what's really important, they are all paying for their compute time. Yeah. We we are basically not allowed to give compute time away for free. So if you see somebody on the list, he has received an invoice and paid for his compute time. And that's in the long run. That's the only thing. Only if if it's worth money for them, then they will do it. Otherwise, they they won't. So it, you you can feed them and give them free time. Uh, for uh, uh, a computer for a long time, but it, it will not really um, help them. Uh, they should be willing to really pay for it. So that's my last slide, I think. Um, so there is working with SMEs. They have a very short horizon, so to speak, which which is absolutely okay given their capabilities. They only go into limited calculable risks, so you have to convince them that have have a stepwise approach. You need to be read very flexible. I think I also heard that yesterday. Um, ease of use is a big thing because we cannot influence everything. So uh, if if the software is more complicated to use, uh, it's more difficult. We are. Well, using uh, queuing systems can always also be some, some sometimes a little bit troublesome, so we are trying to support that. We have partners working on these things as well. They need really excellent support, and uh, I think I fully agree with, uh, with you, Bren. You said it yesterday as well. It comes down to a really high level of trust. That's, that's really important, and uh, this, this is something different than you work with AWS, so this, this is personal. And, uh, and and many of the companies really appreciate that. Yeah, that's it. So thank you.